Hello friends, welcome to my channel. In this video, we will solve some of the important questions related to welding processes. Basically, these questions belong to chapter 10 of CC 3.1 and uh, these questions are general in nature so anybody who is involved involved in welding so they can watch this video our first question is which welding process utilizes a non consumable electrode so very straightforward answer this is TIG welding in TIG, TIG welding a tungsten electrode is used and that tungsten electrode is non not consumed during the welding that tungsten electrode is used to generate arc only hence the correct answer is TIG welding see uh, in TIG welding tungsten electrode is used to create an arc this arc is used to produce the necessary heat for welding and uh, if you have to uh, uh, fill the metal then you need some additional filler metal for filling the uh, gap or filling the material so additional filler metal is required and this electrode is only used to create an arc wherever in the other welding processes like submerged arc welding manual metal arc welding and mig welding the electrode itself acts as a filler metal hence electrode generate the arc also and it fills the material also hence the electrodes are consumed in these welding processes however in TIG welding electrodes are not consumed electrodes are only used for creating an arc so option C will be the correct answer now question number two electrodes classified as E432C and E6010 so E6010 is AWS classification in AWS A5.1 uh, this E6010 classification is given so would usually our option is be baked for one hour baking not required be dried for one hour at 100 degrees celsius and stored at 70 degrees celsius be dried for one hour and at 180 degrees celsius so friends e6010 electrode are general electrodes and they do not require any baking hence option b will be the correct option baking not required these electrodes must be dry only baking is not required in these electrodes see uh, baking is required in only in low hydrogen electrodes so uh, in low hydrogen electrodes like e7018 you need baking whereas e6010 is not they are these electrodes are not characterized as low hydrogen electrodes and baking is not required however they need to be dried and it should be stored carefully to prevent moisture absorption it should not be you know uh, wet or there should not be moisture on the electrode and finally you need to adhere to the uh, you need to adhere to the you know recommend uh, manufacturer recommendations now question number Three. Question number three is in order to calculate arc energy, it is necessary to know. So friends, I will show you the formula of arc energy. See arc energy, unit of arc energy is kilojoule per mm and the formula is volts into amps by travel speed. Hence you need three parameters to calculate the arc energy. First one is voltage, second one is amperes and third one is travel speed. So we will see the option, option B, in option B you have current voltage and travel speed all three options are given current voltage and travel speed and option b will be the correct answer why because to calculate the arc energy you need volt you need current you need travel speed so current is what current is the amperage or the current flowing through the welding arc voltage is the potential difference and travel speed is nothing it is the speed at which the welding process progresses along the joint now before moving further i would request you to support my initiative financially you can do that by joining my channel see after subscribing my channel you will see a join icon underneath any of my video and by pressing this join button and by paying a very small amount you can support my initiative financially now we will move to question number 5 which of the following weld defects is most likely to be caused by poor welding technique when using MMA welding process MMA is shielded metal arc welding or it is also called as manual metal arc welding so in manual metal arc welding many defects can 
originate many defects can occur due to poor welding technique hence we will see the options and will choose the best option the option one option a is hydrogen induced cold cracking option b is crater cracks option c is plate laminations and option d is copper inclusion see friends plate lamination are material defect they are not raw welding defects hence option c shall be rejected copper inclusions occur when copper uh, or particle of copper will uh, you know will go inside the welding hence copper inclusion is not a, a defect uh, generated from poor welding technique the hydrogen induced cracking it occurs due to hydrogen in welding hence this is also not the correct answer our correct answer is crater crack see crater cracks occurs due to poor welding technique what happens uh, at, at the end of welding you suddenly stop the arc and that sudden stop of arc without proper filling will generate the crater crack so crater crack occurs at the end of weld bit so at the end normally weld welder suddenly stop or suddenly terminate the arc and that is why stress concentration uh, are generated and cracks are generated so to ensure crater crack you can do back stepping back stepping is welding from reverse side now question number 6 why is the arc shielded when using an arc welding process so friends shielding is done by gases or shielding can be done by uh, flux also uh, in uh, in smaw you will do flux in submerged arc welding flux are used in gmaw and in tig welding gases are used so all these are used to shield the molten weld fill pull from atmosphere so option b is the correct answer to exclude the atmosphere from the arc region so what happens the molten weld pool shall be separated from the atmosphere because in atmosphere you have oxygen you have nitrogen so these oxygen gases you know they oxidize the weld pool so you you need to exclude the atmosphere from the arc region option b will be the correct answer if you will not shield the molten weld pool then uh, defects like porosity and some other defects can also generate now question number seven which of the following variables will be most affected by variations in arc length when mma welding so in mma or smaw uh, when you will vary the arc length the voltage will vary means all the parameters will vary somehow but voltage will vary significantly so option d is the correct answer voltage if you will increase the arc length the voltage will tend to increase and vice versa means it, if you will decrease the arc length the voltage will tend to decrease so this is uh, you know this relationship is here by is given by ohm's law this is voltage equal to i into r voltage I is the current and R is the resistance and resistance is related or resistance uh, resistance affect uh, the arc length affect the resistance means when you increase the resistance the voltage will increase. Now question number 8 which of the following welding processes would give the highest heat input when using typical parameters almost if you will be using same parameters then which welding process will give the highest input heat input friends submerged arc welding will give the highest heat, heat input because the arc is generally covered under the flux and the welding is continuous welding goes continuously means it is not terminated welding is not terminated entire joint is welded so since it is you know uh, it is it is uh, 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 you know it is covered with the granular flux and con uh, that is why it is it gives intense heat and this heat input is high in submerged arc welding now autogenous welding refers to what simply autogenous welding refers uh, if you are welding without filler metal so option c is the correct answer welding without filler metal in autogenous welding you do not need any additional filler metal only the parent metals are melt and fused that is autogenous welding so autogenous welding refers to welding without filler wire in autogenous welding the fusion of base metal is achieved without use of any additional filler material so this process is commonly used when the base metal itself is sufficient to provide the necessary material for creating the sound weld no additional material is required 
Now question number two, 10. Synergic welding is associated with which welding process? See, synergic term is used for proper coordination. And in terms of synergic welding, uh, this, uh, this is, uh, you know, associated with GMW. Why? Because what happens? If, suppose, if you will vary any parameter, then other parameters are adjusted automatically. That is synergic welding. So in MIG welding, if you will vary the voltage, the wire feed speed will be, you know, changed automatically. So in the power source, the power source itself adjust the wire feed speed as according to the voltage. So this is called as synergic welding and synergic welding systems are designed to enhance the efficiency and control the welding operation. Now question number 11, which welding process uses carbon dioxide gas? So carbon dioxide as shielding gas is used in GMAW, gas metal arc welding. See in gas metal arc welding, it is also known as MIG or MAG welding. When you use inert gas, then this GMAW is known as MIG welding metal inert gas welding and when carbon dioxide is used see carbon dioxide is an active gas so mag welding term is used so in gmaw with co2 as shielding gas this process is sometimes called as mag metal active gas why because co2 is an active gas now question number 12 the term low hydrogen electrode is often used for certain electrodes what type of covering they have see this is a very uh, conceptual question the basic covering the iron powder covering are there on low hydrogen electrode and this uh, uh, low hydrogen electrode are co co this covering is known as basic covering so the answer is basic the term low hydrogen electrode is often associated with electrodes that have, have a basic covering this name of the covering or name of the flux is basic so friends, with this we have come to an end of our today's video. But before you know uh, concluding, I would like to give you a brief introduction of myself. My name is Sandeep Anand. I am a mechanical engineer and I am having 14 plus years of working experience. And my hobby is to share knowledge and I share my knowledge through my website that is weldingandnity.com. And the second mode through which I share my knowledge is my youtube.com, youtube.com slash weldingandnity. This is my YouTube channel and this is my website. So friends, these are my social media account and this is my telegram channel welding and entity and I have already uploaded many codes, standards and study material on this telegram channel. So if you need any code study code or study material or standard, you can go to my telegram channel and you can search from file section. Friends, with this we have come to an end of our today's video. I hope you like this video. Thank you very much.